I didn't feel like going to the mall or hanging out with my friends. I didn't want to talk on the phone. I couldn't really talk, actually. Sounds and noises were um, becoming too much. We were up at all hours of the night um, trying to make sure that she was OK. I remember walking, like going up the stairs, and I remember feeling like someone was behind me. And then I would hear things, like not loud, like, but they would be there. It was weird to go from being this person I've been my whole life to somebody totally different. Mental illness is serious. It's something that happens to a lot of young people. And if you can prevent the onset of psychosis, you may be able to intervene to prevent that kind of disability and maybe even reverse it a little bit. Portland, Maine is a small seacoast city. It prides itself on a rich New England history and relaxed pace. Yet like the rest of the country, it cannot escape the harsh reality of serious mental illness. But something different is happening in this community. An experimental program is underway to recognize mental illness early and minimize its impact on young people. Dr. William McFarlane is founder and principal investigator of PEER, the Portland Identification and Early Referral Program at Maine Medical Center. The PEER program is an attempt to alter the way Portland, Maine at least, deals with schizophrenia and all of the psychotic uh, disorders, but through early identification rather than better treatment after people get ill. 3% of the population will experience psychosis sometime during their lives. Psychosis is a loss of contact with reality, and surprisingly, the first warning signs often occur during adolescence and young adulthood. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's me or if it's a phase or if, you know, what it is. I'm just generally kind of confused and... Um... Peer's novel approach seeks to get young people into treatment at the earliest stages of mental illness. The early treatment of schizophrenia is important because in a sense, when you develop schizophrenia, you drive off a cliff. So imagine, you know, you could stop the process that's already underway. You're driving down the road toward a psychotic episode, toward schizophrenia, and you either drive off the cliff or you don't. Well, like, I my stress is stressing him out. The peer program is an attempt to take all of what we've learned about early psychosis and put it into practice. These are brain-based symptoms and they're treatable. It's a community education effort, it's a treatment program, and it's a research effort. Dr. William Cook is studying the effectiveness of the peer treatment model. The research that we're doing is designed to determine whether it's exactly like any other illness, such as cancer, that if you catch it early, then you have a much better outcome than if it's only treated later. We're all working on the assumption that the earlier you catch it, the better. But how do you identify a young person who exhibits early symptoms that can be so subtle, people close to them might not even notice? The peer approach emphasizes targeted community outreach training thousands to recognize early warning signs of mental illness and encouraging them to call peer so a diagnosis can be made. We look for typically a change in functioning or a drop in functioning. So as a teacher, you would notice a child who is maybe grades were going down a little bit, a young person who's uh, isolating more from their friends, keeping to themselves, a child. We do a lot of connecting with schools. Um, primarily with social workers, guidance counselors, nurses. We find that teachers will often notice through a young person's writing or through their performance in class that, you know, there are changes occurring. So if I have a kid in my class, I don't have training in this, so I'm not going to go to that kid or their parent or something to say something. What, what would I do? Connect with the social worker. And what we'd hope is that we'd get the referral from you sooner so that we can start helping the young person and family 
Peer instructs educators to be on the lookout for classic symptoms of psychosis, including feeling paranoid, difficulty speaking and understanding others, hearing and seeing things that are not there, feeling disconnected from others, losing interest in everyday activities, and getting special messages from TV or radio. We've educated almost the entire professional group in the schools and in the colleges and many of the doctors so that if the family goes to anybody and says, what's wrong with Junior, they are very likely to get an answer back that if that's the story, you should call the peer program. Today, most referrals come from community members who work closely with young people, such as Ann Conley, a nurse practitioner at the University of Southern Maine. Tiffany, a university student, sought Ann's help when she began experiencing disturbing behavior changes early in her freshman year. Tiffany was referred to me by one of the counselors in university counseling here with some symptoms that could have possibly been attributed to major depression but were just a little bit unusual and a little bit different than what you might typically see. I was experiencing some sadness, some um, withdrawn from people, not being so social. I wanted to do schoolwork, but then all of a sudden like, I'd cry. I wasn't being me. I was having some symptoms of like, you know, seeing shadows and figures, and then I would hear things, like not loud, like, but they would be there. Conley credits the knowledge she gained during a peer training session for helping her to identify Tiffany's symptoms. I think she may have some early symptoms of psychosis. Just kind of want you to... What was new for me as a healthcare provider was how very, very subtle these symptoms can be. And what the peer program did was elucidate for me, just make it much clearer that it was okay to just simply have a suspicion and to let somebody screen that student for me. 